few years ago. I saw you in Rotterdam perform. You were replacing the roots. Right, 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 that? right. Exactly. After they left in September. Right, right. And then you were uh, alone as well. You're right. quite like a one-man army. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, my thing is like when when I sat down and wrote my rhymes, I wrote them by myself. When I was in the recording them, I recorded by myself. So, you know, some people, you know, if they need a hype man or whatever, that's cool. But for me, I want to have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with the audience, you know? So I want them to know, like, it's, it's me and you guys, you know what I'm saying? Not me and my whole posse and we, you know, we all out here as 20 guys on stage. No, I want to connect with the audience. So, you know, that's why I just love to go out there by myself and do what I do and really make that connection with the kids, you know what I'm saying? Emperor mixtape is out right now. Um, it's called Hidden Treasures. It's got like a lot of uh, previ previously unreleased material, mm -hmm. hard to, to get material, new freestyles. It's got like three new songs from the next Last Emperor album, and just something to give to people to let them know that you know I haven't disappeared. I'm still here, and something to hold them over until the next album comes out. should be out um you know we're we're, we're kind of keeping the title a secret for a little while some more a few more months but um we're about 70 percent done as far as recording uh, when i go back home we'll finish up hopefully within the next two or three months um but um this next last emperor album is going to pick up where the first album left off um if you understand um i was enlisted by uh king grail wolf in a castle you know, he just approached me, this kid from West Philly, like, yo, we need you to come and help fight the battle for hip-hop, you know? And where it leaves off is, you know, my first episode was done, so this one picks up where the first one left off. It's going to be an action-packed album. It's like a, a, a journey. It's character-driven. There's going to be 12 basic characters to show the people who I have encountered on my next journey. So there's going to be a pirate, a tyrant, a giant, you know, a, a pilot, among other things. So um, it's going to be very character driven and, and, and very much like the old cliffhangers from like the 1940s and 50s. Actually, I mean, um, well, you can't include that in there because really what the Legend of Bigfoot was is like um, sort of like the project that I began. And when I went through different label problems or whatever, yeah, exactly. certain music just got leaked, like it got on the Internet or yeah. whatever. And I wasn't mad at that because for me it was a good situation because that's how people were able to finally get their hands on the music. So, um, you know, 
you can include that. So, like, I guess you would say the Legend of Bigfoot, Music Magic Myth, and Palace of the Pretender. Sort of like um, the three of those entities all make up the first episode of, of The Last Emperor's Journey Through Hip Hop. So this next project is going to pick up where the first one, you know, left off, for sure. What, what kind of man am I? Tell me the truth, cause I just can't stand alive. I can't find it, but I still be a man to try. But since these adventures, I punch out a samurai. They go to my career, no woman is fired there. She calls me down with the struggle of my life. She breaks peace to streets filled with violence. But now it doesn't matter, I'll start firing. Words I speak said that we get so retired. Maybe about three or four, and they'll be strategically placed, like if they really fit. You know, um, I know when I go home, we, you know, we're we're trying to look at maybe getting with like Bahamadia, getting a joint with her, and you know, just keeping it whoever fits within the story. Like I don't just want to go get any artist and get them on the album, you know, because it's a story, a story type of album. We have to figure out well who would really fit in this particular situation, you know. So, uh, you know, there will be a few collaborations, but, um, you know, so far we're just concentrating on getting the bulk of the work done, and we'll probably collaborate once we get back home. You were talking about on stage uh, Sean Price, Black Moon. Right, right. Th those are an option for the new album? Or? Yeah, they're all they're always an option because you know, again, I've been fortunate enough to work with you know some of the great artists and beat makers in this industry, like the beat miners. Yeah. So through them. I've developed relationships with like Smith and Wesson and you know um, Helter Skelter and all those cats so you know um, they, they all it's like so many people that I've developed a relationship with I have to sit and think well okay I have to pick and choose from all these people who would I really want to collaborate with but that's the wonderful thing about hip-hop like I'm such a fan of groups like Black Moon and Smith and Wesson and, and the beat miners that you know, um, it's an honor and privilege for me to even be able to work with these cats, you know. What if I took my love for hip hop and comics and made it equal and gave the people Secret Wars Part 2, the long awaited sequel? And then I made a hip hop brunch match. I'll make it lethal. How would my favorite rappers perform in the face of evil? What if I took the RZA from Wu Tang, the RZA Rector? Some German friends on stage? Yeah, What's yeah, the story yeah. Behind that? Yo, the story is, you know, everywhere I go, you know, again, I'm a fan of the music first and foremost. And I acknowledge the fact that the power of hip hop is so strong that it's all across the world right now. I think when we finally send a manned mission to Mars, if there are Martians, they'll probably be listening to hip hop too. You know what I'm saying? There's probably some Martian MCs up there. But oh, what if we got Blade, the Black Hunter of Vampires, versus DMX? You know the Rough Rider. There's no telling how they might react. I see how X can bite the track. Would Blade be afraid, or would X leave with his life intact? He's like, yo, 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 Blade, I think you got me wrong. I ain't that type of cat, I mean. And if you try to stop the door, I'm gonna have to bite you back. I saw DMX break him apart. Take him apart. He played with the 
how strong hip hop is so everywhere I go I develop relationships with people and you know the guys that were on stage you know Q Fingers and Geronimo you know the first time I came out to Germany you know I kicked it with them we ended up recording a song and so that's what we performed so everywhere I go you know I, I just encounter people that are real serious about hip hop so you know I'll just continue to do that and I, and I love to give them a chance to show the people in the world who they are because once upon a time I was new, and, and people gave me an opportunity to go out, you know? This is all that happens when you hear those toy rappers. They would not have heard out. We go and have the martial matters. With Eminem, they use the daredevil for toy practice. They shade it. 